much, Karen Corla. Um, and I'd like to thank Sinn Féin for bringing this motion forward. Um, but Minister, I don't know if it's just me, but this feels like Groundhog Day. Every few weeks we're talking about energy prices and energy markets and energy failures in this chamber and it's been going on now for a number of years. And the reason we're still talking about it and the reason we'll still be talking about it in six months time is because what we're actually facing is a market that's running wild a market that is no longer fit for purpose. Um, you spoke earlier on about uh, how international factors are pushing up the price. Yes, they absolutely are. But we need an energy market that can deal with that and we need a regulator that can regulate and deal with it as well and ensure that customers and consumers are protected. And we actually don't have that at the moment. So I think there's a fundamental need here for market reform. Um, in light of the changing energy systems, we're moving into a very different uh, energy generation makeup. Um, and I think that there is need for, for a fundamental uh, reform of, of our markets. But I do also think we also need to look at the role of the CRU and their place in this. I just see in your speech, Minister, you talk about the CRU has announced consumer protection measures. Mm -hmm. And really, when you look at what the protection measures are, it's essentially ways to help consumers pay back the bills that they've racked up because the energy companies have hiked up the prices. That, in a lot of instances, is what it is. It's uh, payment plans. It's um, you know saying, okay, we won't disconnect you now because it's winter time, but you know, come come summer, we want you. Uh, you know, you will be in a position where you'll be disconnected if you don't pay back the money that you owe us. So I think what we have is, is a system and a market uh, whereby that's not serving our people, but one where people are serving it. And what I've seen over the last couple of years is government running around trying to prop this up. So when there has been issues in relation to price hikes, government, I think it's four billion you outlined, uh, that has been spent so that money has gone directly to energy companies because the prices were too high and people couldn't afford it. So the market has government and it has taxpayers' money working for it. Um, and I don't think that that is uh, where we need to be. And so with the CRU, it does need more uh, power. It needs teeth. And it needs to be able to protect people. It needs to be able to cover, um, as the Sinn Féin motion has outlined, it needs to be able to cover uh, things like the standing charges. We need to have a better understanding of the hedging that companies have used. Because it's incredible that I understand that hedging you know, has an 18-month time frame. But it's incredible how quickly the prices went up when they also would have hedged at that point at a particular price but they still managed to work those uh, price hikes in there. We're not seeing it fall in, a, in equivalent fashion. So I think there needs to be transparency around the hedging process. Um, and I absolutely agree that that needs to be with the CRU. And I also think that the CRU, from a resource perspective, uh, needs additional supports because they have been tasked with um, a lot of very new roles when you're talking about all the wind farms and the res auction and, and uh, oversight of the grid. You know, there's a lot uh, of, of new work that they've been tasked with. So I think it is important that they have the resources to deal with it. Um, when we're talking about prices, and I've spoken many, many times about the impact that this is having on individuals and homes and the difficulties that it's causing people, um, I'd like to focus a bit more on businesses today because I, you know, I, I understand that government has actually given support to businesses, but Minister, it's not helping anymore. And that's the reality of it. Uh, I've spoken recently to a business in Wicklow. It's a restaurant, uh, cafe business. Um, and the owner of that said her average monthly bill for electricity in 2021 was 2000 euro. In 22, it increased to 4,000 a month. And in February of this year, it increased because they are now out of contract. It is now 8,900. They will not survive these uh, price increases. And they recognise and they welcome the supports that government gave them. But they're making the point that it is no longer enough. Um, and actually what's going to happen is if they go out of business, 
they've had a number of years, as have all hospitality sector, a number of years where considerable government supports were given them to the, through the pandemic. They managed to keep their head afloat during the pandemic. They managed to keep going. And they got out of the pandemic and they got back on their feet and now they've been hit with energy costs. And it's just too much for them to take. Unfortunately, there's two very, um, very popular uh, cafes in, in Wicklow that in the last couple of weeks have actually closed their business at Maka Joe's in Ratrum and Little Betty's in Avoca. And they were small little cafes, but they were the core of the community, incredibly popular. So they didn't just serve coffee, they served community. And now they're gone. Um, so we're starting to see that these small businesses can no longer take the pressure. Interestingly, uh, this business owner told me that um, apparently energy providers require a security deposit of between five and 7,000 for those if they want to take a new contract in the hospitality sector. So I'd be interested, I, I don't know whether you've heard that, I'll be looking into it further, but you know, that, that's huge money for, for small businesses to cover. Um, I think, Minister, you know, we, we do need to see the market reforms, but I think we also need to see um, resilience being built into the system. And, and, you know, I note that you talked about the retrofitting that's happened, and I, you know, I absolutely support that. I think we need to see more, um, um, you know, but we, we do need to see that. But I would just like to reiterate and emphasise again the potential that is there for solar supports. I think the government needs to absolutely have huge intervention in providing solar panels for individual homes and businesses. One million homes in this country are eligible for solar. If they had solar panels, it would reduce their energy costs by 40% a year. Can you imagine if some of that 4 billion that was given as cash handouts had actually been invested in those homes, because what it would mean is that their energy costs will be reduced this year and next year and the year after. That is a long-term sustainable approach that's required. Once you give the cash handout, and I understand that people really needed that money, but it is now gone. It is now in the pockets of energy companies. What we need is for a long-term strategy for your government. We need to make those householders resilient to all those international, those global shocks. We need them generating their own energy. And that is only possible if there is a at scale approach and a large intervention by government in providing solar panels, rolling them out across each estate, do it on an estate by estate basis. It is the most efficient way to do it. It is the most cost effective way to do it. The government could go to Europe and buy it bulk solar panels and get them rolled out. It will be a lot quicker to do than relying on retrofitting. It takes you know, a fraction of the um, construction staff um, to do it. It is a much quicker bang for book. And I would really ask you, Minister, that you consider doing that. I welcome the, uh, the VAT uh, reduction. Um, I think that was uh, a, an important initiative and it was good to see uh, that uh, the government followed on from the direction of the, the EU in that regard. But I think a lot more needs to be done. Because if you don't do it now, we now have six months in the summer with a little bit of breathing space. Use this time so that all those households can get through the winter without government having to essentially pay their energy bills. Because that is not... Uh, you know, that, that is uh, not a good use of taxpayers' money. Um, and it's certainly also not a good uh, use or, or, or way to deal with our emissions, because that is the thing about the solar, it will deal with the energy costs and it will deal with our emissions. And it will also help our grid. There's three wins, three wins for the same money. Um, and that's the kind of focus and innovation that we need to see. We need a real rooftop uh, revolution um, that actually puts power back into people's hands.